2K Sports and the PGA Tour. Proud to bring you the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today's coverage of the Farmers Insurance Open is about to begin. Hello, I'm Luke Elvey alongside 2002 PGA Championship winner Rich Beam, who's in the booth. And it's a hello to Henny Koyak down on the course following our featured group. Hi Luke, I'm very happy to be following this featured group because there are rumours of a rivalry brewing between these two players. So it looks like they aim to beat Justin Thomas. Should add a bit of extra excitement to our coverage today, Henny. Oh, that goes without saying, Luke, but Justin Thomas will not be easy to beat. I don't think there's a more competitive man out there on tour. No, you're absolutely right there. He's a complete player. It'll certainly be interesting to keep an eye on this rivalry throughout the event. Well, that should find the bunker. This sand shot awaits. This one looks to be slightly offline here. And here we are with the third shot. <laughs> Playing their fourth shot. That's a tasty looking chip. Top shot. Yes. Very smooth tempo there on that chip. So it'll be a bogey on the scorecard to begin the round. Starting off with a bogey at first, not tragic. You got a lot of holes to make it up. Let's see how they deal with it going forward. Wow, I didn't even know they had this power. Great drive. Time for the second shot here on the second hole. Uh, this one's heading towards the rough, I think. That dog will hunt. This would be a great up and down. He's got a par part here. Let's see if he can make it. Good looking putt. That's a good putt for par. You'll take it. He's currently tied for 15th. There are so many stunning golf holes on this entire property. And this third, the par three downhill, certainly one of the elite holes on the course. It might be stunning to look at, but it is painful. Can be extremely painful to play. Downhill all the way. When they tuck the pin over on the left-hand side, forget about it. Never hit it there. Only when the pen is on the center or the right part of the green should you be taking dead aim. Other than that, center the green all day long. That wasn't their best approach, Beamer. And coming up well short. Well, these are good putts to make. Good for momentum, right on seven feet. This is important, big par putt here. And that's a masterstroke. It not only improves their position in the field, they're now ahead of their rival. 
And this effort by Justin Thomas. It's been neck and neck. He's actually tied with his rival. This is tough. Can he do it? Well, this was the conundrum, wasn't it? When the new rule came in, did they leave the flag stick in or did they take it out? I'm pretty sure they wish they would have taken it out there. One of the hardest holes on the entire property is the par four fourth ridge. It is a strong demanding hole right from tee to green. Very picturesque this fourth hole. Pacific Ocean directly to the golfer's left hand side. Don't be sucked in the, by the views. However, you want no part of that. And you certainly don't want any part of that fairway bunker down the right hand side either. Find the fairway and you've got a good chance of knocking it on this green in two. Be wary though, anything long and left on this green is no good. Yeah, that one will play. Justin Thomas, major champion, world number one player, really has all the attributes, doesn't he, Rich? He does. His focus on the, his own game is, is amazing. I, I think that this kid really understands how to play the game. He's got all the shots, but he doesn't try and get up there and hit it as hard as he can every single time. He gets out there and he learns how to play the game, hit the finesse shots when you need it, take some risks when you have when you need to but also back off when you don't need to this kid is a real deal complete game from head to toe now this is an extremely long putt you might even have to hinge on this one get in and uh, it'll be a good result i know it didn't go down but it just a tap in awaits trying to get back to even par with this part. This one's tracking. That's inside the range. Our current leader is enjoying a one-shot lead. There's a real premium on your tee shots here at Torrey Pine South Course. Keeping ball in fairways critical, and that is illustrated also by the par four fifth. This fairway cambers from left to right, which helps a fade on this hole. However, don't get too overzealous and pull it because that fairway bunker down the left, that sees a lot of action. Second shot is a green that pitches back toward you from back to front. That's got a lot of movement over on the left-hand side. Do you like the view from where you're standing, Henny? Sitting up here from about 160 yards. Looks to have opted for the eight iron. Now that looked pretty good the whole way. And a chance to move into a tie for second here. This one's online. And with that putt hold, it's back-to-back -back birdies. I will take that also into the top five now. Trailing by a stroke after that hole. Rich, there are a number of strong holes on this outward half, but the par five sixth the players are definitely thinking birdie here, but it's all set up by the tee shot. It's a nice reprieve, this par five. Just a little bit dog leg from left to right. Keep it shy of those fairway bunkers down the left-hand side, and almost every player will give it a go in two. This is a three-tiered green with a low area over on the left-hand side that sees a lot of action. That's a chunky lie. It's going to take all their talents to get out of this one. Well, this could alter the line of the shot. Oh, come on, you're better than that. Sitting at one under the card. Currently tied for second.
Oh, well done. Now let's switch our focus to Justin Thomas. Yeah, he just made bogey on that last one. Oh, stop it. What a way to make your par. And look out, guys. This rivalry looks like it's going to get pretty interesting today as he's making up some ground on his playing partner. Oh, good look at Birdie here. What are we looking at for this putt, Henny? This one's 13 feet from the cup. They're nicely hold. Currently one under for the event. Moving up the leaderboard. I like it. The par four seventh, a little dog leg left to right. Again, positioning off the tee is key. This fairway slopes pretty good from left to right. Players want to start it out at the fairway bunker down the left-hand side and just hit a gentle fade off of that. Second shot here is to an elevated green. Don't go long whatsoever here. That's when the Barranca and the Canyons come into play. That's not what he had hoped for. I'm pretty sure of that. Well, Rich, this won't come as a big surprise, will it? Because there's a lot of people talking about this player. They've been performing beautifully all season. And many think they can win this event. Without a doubt, the best player all around on tour, in my mind's eye. It is no shock to see them contending for the lead once again. From the sand, looking to get up and down. on the green now but a bit of work left to do here this putt about 11 feet in distance an important par save there it is now let's head over and see what JT's been doing now, who'd have thought we'd see this he is behind his rival can he do the catching up that's necessary Oh, wouldn't that have been nice? Yeah, that's a touch of class. Terrific little chip. Got to say, his short game is phenomenal. We head up the hill away from the ocean here at the eighth hole, Rich. A lovely par three, but all the challenges in the green. It is. It's very wide, not very deep. Players going in there with kind of mid irons to short irons. Uphill the entire way. Difficult to get it on that back level when they stick the pin all the way on top. This looks to be heading to the green. A yeah, quality shot that. Okay, Henny. What's he looking at with this putt? This is downhill. Can't be too bold. Oh, just missed. Just a tiny putt is all that remains. And just keeping it in neutral on the leaderboard. The par 5 ninth is a monster over 600 yards rich. Challenging to say the least. I think the challenging part about it, Lucas, is just straight away. You have to hit a straight tee shot, a straight second shot, and a straight third shot to find the green in three. It really is just that simple and straightforward. The green does have two tiers on it, but for the most part, Luke, it's an inviting third shot. That was wonderfully done. Rich, we know these days with the PJ Tour, the wraparound schedule, uh, the tour begins in the fall, but really it's felt at the start of any new year that every time you come to Torrey Pines, the big stars come out to play. It feels like the authentic start to the season. It certainly does that, and I think that the big-name players 
the accomplished players love coming here to Torrey Pines because it's going to give them a gauge of exactly where their game is at and what they need to work on because you can't go around either the north or the south course and geek it around. You have to be on your game. You have to drive the ball well. Your iron play has to be spot on, and your short game better be sharp because if not, you're going to shoot a million. Both of these golf courses are very challenging, but they're fair, and I think that's what the players love about it. If you're in a good zone mentally and everything is going well physically, you can produce a 64 or 65, but if you're hitting it poorly and you're not thinking squarely, I'm telling you what, 77s and 78s come into the equation real quick. Well, that was a bit of a wild swing. Probably be a similar result too. Henny, how's that ball lying? It's tough to see from here. You can get great connection on this one. The rough's not going to cause any trouble. It's sitting good. Going with the pitching wedge here. Oh, I didn't see this as possible. What a shot. Outstanding shot, high quality. And they've been rolling the ball great today. Another great look. That limits the damage. And this effort by Justin Thomas. He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. This putt, a chance to move inside the top 20 on the leaderboard. It was on a good line. And after that effort, let's take a look at how it stands. This is the transition point of the round, making the turn, heading for home. How do you rate this player's performance so far? Well, after nine, so far, so good. It's great to see these two players stepping up, getting the best out of the games. It'll be interesting to see exactly who's going to be ahead at the end of the tournament. A chance to go under par here if you can just keep the bogeys off the card. And Henny, what's he facing with this one? Setting up here from about 155. And choosing the eight iron here. Yeah, nicely played. Already had a few birdies today. Another opportunity for another one. Let's take a look. Henny, you've had the chance to have a look over this one? Honestly, guys, I stopped counting at 40 feet. This is way out. Didn't quite have the right stuff there. A chance to get one under the card with this putt. This is what they have left for birdie here. Like the look of this one. And yeah, nice effort from him. He bounces back from the bogey at the last hole. And with it, he moves to one under par. He's currently tied for first. There aren't too many easy holes here at Torrey Pines South, but the course certainly gets tougher as we head to the par 3 11th. This green from the back tee looks minuscule. There's just not a lot of room on the front of it. Even the back section, which it does get a little bit wider, it still is very small. A massive shelf, top left. If you get it up there, happy days for you. If not, just find the green, two putt, make three, move on.
That's a good shot by him. He'll be delighted. Long way away from the hole if they want to make the birdie, though. Standing over this one, and it's a very long putt. All right, guys. This for two birdies in a row. Just a couple of inches away from finding that one. Currently one under for the round. We head to the 12th hole. This par four is as big and as strong and as tough as you find anywhere on the PGA Tour. This is about as tough a hole as you're going to find anywhere on the planet. Prevailing wind coming right back into the players. You just have to step up and hit a solid tee shot to find the fairway from there. You're going in with a mid to long iron, sometimes even a hybrid to a green that sits just above you. Not a ton of movement, but enough from back right to front left to make you think. Second shot here on the 12th. Looks to be going with the five iron. This one's left of the green. Is that what they had in mind? Getting ready to play their third. Currently tied for the lead. <laughs> Lovely touch. Well played. Such soft hands. Currently one under for the day. All right, Rich. The par 5 13th. So much has been said about it. I'm interested in your thoughts. This is one of the most interesting par 5s you'll ever play. If you hit a good tee shot, find the fairway, and you have the opportunity to reach, then happy days. But if you don't find the fairway or can't reach, now you've got to lay up into a low area where you're going to have a third shot that's absolutely blind. This third shot could be one of the most difficult third shots on the PGA Tour, bar none. Well, this is not a good outcome. Buried in the deep stuff. Yeah. Heading towards the rough, this one. Henny, how's that ball lying? Looks like they have a bad lie here in the second cut. This is not sitting nicely. Opting for the five iron. Well, you're going to need to think of your second shot already because that one's beached. Now let's switch our focus to Justin Thomas. Now, who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? Sitting at minus one. Currently tied atop the leaderboard. This putt for par here. Ooh, right by the hole. Well, that hole's behind us. More to play. A little slide happening here on the leaderboard. See if he can bounce back. All right, getting into our final stretch. Time to tee off here at the 14th. That's an awful error. And he's down there. Setting up from about 130 yards out. Going with the five iron here. Wow, did this come out beautifully. That was a little bit of a misfire, I'd say. Distance control not easy when you're coming out of the rough. And here we are with the third shot. They're looking to get this one close in hopes of saving par.
An opportunity to make a par here. Looking good so far. Solid par putt, that. And with that, he'll stay right there at even par. We stride across the 15th, Rich, and we talk about strong par fours. This is another one. As big as 12 was, Luke, this is almost twice the size, if you can imagine it, with a tiny, tiny landing area out there. This is possibly the meanest hole on this golf course. Not hardest, meanest. If you've walked off with par on this hole, job well done, my friend. Looks to be going with a hybrid here. Terrific shot into the 15th and a chance for birdie. Eight feet to the cup. He's staring down a birdie putt here. And with that, that's their fourth birdie. Hang on to your hat, folks. We're on for a wild ride. Well, that was a positive hole. A little shift up the leaderboard. Well played. 16th, the last of the par threes on this golf course, but it's not an easy one. This is underrated difficult. The green is big in size, but it plays awfully small because there's really small sections to this green. The front, the back right, and the top left. If you find the right section, job well done. If you don't, it's going to be a difficult two-putt, to say the least. That's a shame. Just leaking left, that one. He didn't look to hit that one quite so flush. He'll have to work extra hard to get out of this one. Yeah, this is not what they wanted. There might be a couple of hits here. Well, this would be a great par putt if he can make this. Short game has been especially sharp today, Luke. Very impressive. Just three feet to the cup. Good putt, that. Now let's head over and see what JT's been doing. He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. And now we can take a look at how that play affects the leaderboard. And that'll drop him down to even par now. The penultimate hole at Torrey Pines South is not a long par four, but the danger lurks everywhere. They moved this fairway to the left alongside the canyon a few years ago, which really enhanced the beauty, but also the fear of this hole. You have to challenge the left-hand side because the bunker down the right is really no good. From there, the green, it tilts from back to front, mostly with a really low section over there on the left-hand side. However, it still is a promising birdie opportunity. Opting for the 9-iron. Ooh, yeah, no, not where they wanted to go. This one's left. Where was that going? Do you think they drew that up differently in their mind? Distance control nearly impossible coming out of this rough. A chance to get up and down for this player. Time now for the fourth shot. And only one off the pace here. Didn't that look good for a long time? This one for bogey. And that putter's hold, and that means it's back-to-back -back bogeys, unfortunately. Two bogeys in a row, never a good sign. Now playing a little defensively. Well, the finishing hole here at Torrey Pines South, one of the more famous on the PGA Tour, site of so many of Tiger's wonderful victories. Par five, you can get there in two. You can, but you have to thread your drive in between those four fairway bunkers that line the fairway. From there, now you have to think, do I want to take on this flag with the bunkers right, bunkers left, and certainly the water in front? It's a daunting second shot, but if you're brave enough to take it on, then you could reap massive rewards.
Where did that come from? That's not his style. Getting ready to play their third. Just two shots behind. Yep, solid connection. This is looking good. That lie was so bad, I didn't think they'd be able to get it anywhere near there. This putt is for a score of 72. Go on, get in the hole. Oh, a little bit of a rush of blood by the looks of it. Putting for a par now. And with it, that concludes his event. Well, there was no doubt this player was one of the players to watch this week, but ultimately, Rich, unable to get the victory. One of the best players in the game, but just couldn't quite get it out of second gear this week. You know, day late, dollar short, however you want to look at it, didn't get the victory. Well, that just about concludes our coverage. I'm Luke Elvey, and on behalf of Rich B, plus all the hardworking folks at HB Studios, it's good night for now.